Doug Skadge, will you please lead us in prayer? Thank you, Lord, for the day you've given to us today. And thank you for the opportunity to come here this evening and to do our very best to advance the town of Fairfield and to conduct city business. We ask you to be with the council this evening and all of us here in the days to come. In Jesus' name. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag. council meeting to minutes you've had a chance to review them are there any changes to the minutes of the last meeting if there are none is there a motion to approve them I'll make that motion I'll second I have a motion by Terry Stahl to approve the minutes of the last meeting and second with you by Eugene McGill yes yes <laughs> Reaver Yes. Stahl? Yes. Atterbury? Yes. Eckleberry? Yes. Lampley? Yes. Lizenby? Yes. And that motion passes. Also in your council packet was a listing of the bills that were paid for the, this uh, period. Are there any questions on any of the bills? If there are none, are there a motion to approve the bills? I make that motion. I'll second. I have a motion on the floor by Dewey to approve the bills of the last meeting. Uh, second by Jerry. Roll call vote. Reaver? Yes. Stahl? Yes. Atterbury? Yes. Eckleberry? Yes. Lampley? Yes. Lizenby? Yes. McGill? Yes. And that motion is approved. Uh, next would be the uh, public comment section. Uh, if there's someone in the audience that would like to address the council, we ask that you step forward. State your name and your address, and you will have three minutes to address the council. At this time, is there anybody in the audience that would like to address the council? Seeing none, we will close the public comment section and move into routine business. Uh, the uh, number one item today on the agenda for right now is to award the bid of the water filtration chemicals. In your packet, you had a listing of the bids uh, for the water filtration plant and the chemicals. Are there any questions? Is, is there a reason why there was no bids for the three lines in red? Um, or is that just the way it normally is? I, I think that's just the way that nobody bid it. That's just, that's just standard procedure. I know on a couple of chlorines, you know, they there was one that the bid was only good through, through December 31st, and, and so that's just the way it is. Any other questions? If there are no other questions, is there a motion to approve the, the bids for the chemicals? I'll make a motion. Second. Motion on the floor by Tyler to approve the water filter chemical bids. Uh, second by Clifford Reaver. Roll call vote. Stahl? Yes. Atterbury? Yes. Eckleberry? Yes. Lampley? Yes. Lizenby? Yes. McGill? Yes. Reaver? Yes. And that motion is approved. Item number two is an IML agreement revision for the fiscal year of 2223. <coughs> Uh, in your packets area, you will see what the original agreement was. It was uh, the contribution was like two hundred and seventy-one thousand six hundred and thirty-three dollars, but we removed some equipment uh, at the power plant, which reduced our our pay. <coughs> that would be a correct statement, Tyler. Which would be correct. Uh, you know, we got we got a refund check of sixty-two thousand two hundred and five dollars. 
So basically what we're doing here is just revising the agreement to, to reflect the correct amount. Any questions on that? If not, is there a motion to approve the revision? I'll make that motion. Go ahead and second that. I'll second have a motion on the floor by Dewey to approve the IML agreement, second by Tyler. Roll call vote. Atterbury? Yes. Eckleberry? Yes. Lampley? Yes. Lizenby? Yes. McGill? Yes. Reaver? Yes. Stahl? Yes. And that motion is approved. Number three on the agenda is the airport of main maintenance agreement with Albion Radio Communications. This is something that's uh, renewed every year uh, at this time. I'm Thing, major changes in the agreement, uh, but you've had a chance to read the agreement. Um, is there any discussion on the, the maintenance agreement without being radio communications? If none, is there a motion to approve the agreement? I have a motion on the floor by Eugene McGill to approve the Albion Radio Communications Airport Agreement. Second by Jerry Lisenby. Mm -hmm. Roll call vote. Eckleberry? Yes. Lampley? Yes. Lisenby? Yes. McGill? Yes. Reaver? Yes. Stahl? Yes. Atterbury? Yes. And that motion is approved. Uh, item number four is the Chamber of Commerce Economic Development Coordinator appointment. Um, in your packets, there is an agreement uh, with uh, the Chamber of Commerce and with the Wayne County Board uh, for the Economic Development. Uh, our contract currently states it says the city shall provide compensation and benefits as outlined here is from September 1 of 2021 to August 31st of 22. At the second council meeting, uh, we will approve the appointment or the contract for one more year. Uh, it was a two-year contract. Uh, Wayne County don't uh, give $5,000 a year to the uh, position, and the Chamber of Commerce, uh, I believe it's $13,500 is what they contribute. Uh, and again, the, you know, we're talking about Libby. Uh, her, uh, is there any any questions on, on on the approval of the agreement just to extend it for another year? And if we vote to extend it, everything in the current contract remains as it is. We make that motion. I'll second that motion. I have a motion on the floor by Clifford Reaver to approve the um, Chamber of Commerce Economic Development Coordinator appointment, second by Eugene McGill. Roll call vote. Lampley? Yes. Lizenby? Yes. McGill? Yes. Reaver? Yes. Stahl? Yes. Atterbury? Yes. Eckleberry? Yes. And that motion is approved. Uh, item number five on the agenda is an ordinance requiring access to utility meters. We've had a little bit of discussion previously. Uh, you know, we've had uh, residents that would like to build a fence, uh, and we have uh, a utility meter, be it electric, gas, or water, that might be inside the fence. Um, you know, and here we're just looking to say that we're not going to prohibit the resident from from having the fence, but there needs to be an understanding that they will grant us access to their property uh, in case we need to get in there for an emergency, or if we just need to get in there to repair a gas line, dig up a gas line, uh, and th there's a couple of options. Uh, you know, the customer can take his own fence down or in emergency, we have the right to enter the property as we see fit, whether it's yanking the fence down or cutting, and that is the responsibility of repair for the consumer. Um, <clears throat> anything to add, Attorney Rice? Oh, no, sir. And this would also, uh, you know, it, it's you know, it's a statement of our customer, and our customer is not. We have customers that are outside the city limits. Uh, Manor East, uh, you know, is is uh, we have utilities out there, and we expect the same thing, you know, from the customers outside of the city limits. Uh, you know, that that is serviced by the city. 
also want to address the, the animal issue. Uh, if there is a vicious, I'll, I'll use the word vicious, but I don't know if vicious is the correct word, but if there's a dog that wants to bark and the meter readers don't want to go in there, they can't get in there, uh, that the consumer would be responsible for the cost of a meter that can be, be read remotely. Uh, the city will install it at no charge, but it will be the residents uh, responsibility to bear the cost of the meeting. And opening that up for discussion. What's what's the cost of average cost of the meter? See red like that. Uh, I think the water meters, if I remember right, are about two hundred and fifty, three hundred dollars. Uh, you know the AMI meters. You know that Wayne White will be installing shortly. I mean, that, you know, we're, we're spending seven hundred thousand dollars on those. Uh, they, weren't, yeah, white, they weren't quite as expensive per meter as the water, uh, but yeah, they're, they're all between two, two hundred and fifty dollars. How much for electric meters? Well, <laughs> the electric meters, I don't know the cost per meter, but I mean, you know, with the AMI meters, which will be, they will all be read remotely. You know, we when we get those installed, you know, we, we have $700,000 allotted to, to the meter. So really, after that's all done, you're just the water, water and gas. gas. Yes. Could be the thing. Yeah. And it could be either utilities. I mean, if you get out into the Lakeview area, I mean, there are residents, you know, that has the water in the back, you know, oh, just the way it was ran. Right. But I mean, you know, we want to give the, the homeowner the ability to put in a privacy fence, you know, uh, but we also want to make sure that we have access to do our job that we need to do. Thank you. Do, do we have the capability to read those meters if they get in? Yes, uh, with, uh, you know, we're, we currently have water meters now that are being read remotely on a drive-by uh, and talking with census, you know, they, they, have, they have the ability to do uh, gas and or Water and of course Wayne White will be able to read you know the AMI meters and all that. Any other discussion? If not, is there a motion to approve this ordinance? I make that motion. Go ahead. Is there a motion on the floor by Judy Eckleberry to approve the ordinance requiring access to the utility meter. Second by Jerry Lisenby. Roll call vote. Lisenby? Yes. McGill? Yes. Reber? Yes. Stahl? Yes. Atterbury? Yes. Eckleberry? Yes. Lampley? Yes. And that motion is approved, or the ordinance is approved. Uh, item number six on the agenda uh, is the uh, for the abatement of certain fines imposed by the municipal court. Uh, basically, what we're looking at here, um, we have some issues. Uh, when a renter or a homeowner may put some things out uh, that is not going to be picked up uh, you, you know, by, the, by the trash company that we have a contract with. And so something needs to be done there. Uh, we can have the street and bridge go down there and clean it up. Uh, but you know, we need to put the, uh, the abatement term in for the municipal court so that maybe we can uh, recoup some of those costs. Uh, just it also it provides uh, you know the, the court uh, right now um, they have it to where uh, they can impose a fine but uh, you know also if the person who's a defendant in the municipal court uh, goes and you know, cleans up the property this would enable them to you know, abate that fine as well and kind of encourage you know the cleanup and so forth so um, kind of, and it goes with their discretion And Mary Beth is, is the, uh, Mary Beth Welch is the uh, attorney that handles the municipal court. You know, she just recommended that, that, you know, that this be added to it to make it a little easier. I mean, I think it would be something that would be good to help us keep our town cleaned up when you right. see landlords and, and or renters piling 500 bags out in front of the 
house isn't going to have the ability to do anything about it, or we go down there and clean it up and can't recoup any of it. Yes. Any other discussion on that? If none, is there a motion to I'll approve this motion. ordinance? I'll second it. I have a motion on the floor by Terry Stahl to approve the uh, abatement for fines for the municipal court. Second by Tyler Lampley. McGill? Yes. Reaver? Yes. Stahl? Yes. Atterbury? Yes. Eckleberry? Yes. Lampley? Yes. Lizenby? Yes. And that ordinance is approved. Uh, the next item uh, is discussion of the possible action concerning the auxiliary police department. Uh, before we have any discussion like that, I would like to call for an executive session uh, for the purpose of? Going to executive session, to discuss section 2C21, minutes of closed session meetings, and section 2C6, the setting of a price for sale or lease of property owned by public body. I'll make the motion. Second. Go ahead. I have a motion by Tyler Lampley to go into executive session. A second by Clifford Reaver. Roll call vote. Reaver? Yes. Stahl? Yes. Atterbury? Yes. Eckleberry? Yes. Lampley? Yes. Lizenby? Yes. McGill? Yes. And we will go into public session, but we will return to take action. So bear with us just a few minutes.
Pete. <laughs> I was coming out to see you a minute ago. Get this back to folder A. I messed around with it enough that I, I stumbled across it. Pete probably wiped it off. The yellows are the ones that we approve. Council will be back in open session. Uh, item number seven is a discussion and possible action concerning the auxiliary police building across the road. Um, we would like to put this building up for sale. Uh, we would ask a minimum bid of $60,000, and we would prefer that a retail location business goes in there. We're going to ask that anybody that bids on the building brings their business plan to the city council and discusses their intentions with that building. Uh, and we would like to have uh, the first meeting in October uh, to have a, a sealed bid in the city hall and uh, be able to, uh, to uh, approach and discuss with the city council their intentions. Did I miss anything? No, sir. Okay. Any other discussions on <clears throat> that? Is not. If not, is there a motion to put the auxiliary police building uh, up for bid with a minimum bid of sixty thousand dollars? Retail preferred. I'll make the motion. Second. I have a motion by Tyler Lampling on the floor to. Um, Put the auxiliary police building up for bids. Second by Clifford Reaver. Roll call vote. Stahl? Yes. Atterbury? Yes. Eckleberry? Yes. Lampley? Yes. Lizenby? Yes. McGill? Yes. Reaver? Yes. And then passes. Uh, item number eight is the water tower TIF agreement. And, and this is just kind of a update a little bit. Uh, when we first started talking about the construction of a new water tower, uh, Connor and Connor got us a bid. Uh, at that time, I believe the bid come in at $1.4 million. Uh, there are some fundings available. Uh, Darren Bailey's office committed $200,000, I believe, to, to the project. Uh, it is TIF eligible uh, since the water tower will serve the TIF district. And then uh, we would uh, use our line of credit at Clay City Bank uh, for the remaining balance. Uh, Connor and Connor has given us some new numbers on the water tower. Uh, the water tower now is at $1.8 million. Uh, again, we have the $200,000 from Darren Bailey's office. Uh, TIF, uh, we just need to have a TIF agreement uh, of the money that TIF will contribute to this policy or to the project. Uh, and uh, you know, Shannon uh, is a is a formula of 28.7 percent of the total project. Uh, so we're going to ask uh, Doug Skaggs to, and, and with the assistance of Attorney Rice, to develop a an agreement uh, with TIF that the uh, TIF agreement will be. Doug, do you remember that number? Uh, it should be 528 thousand. And just, just to let you know, I, Doug and I have um, discussed this this afternoon and uh, last week, and I spoke with uh, Shannon Litter today about it, and I think we've already got a rough draft formulated so that we can bring it before the council at the next meeting. And um, Shannon's also sent to me the, the legal description uh, as to where the proposed new water tower will go. Tyler and I met a while back uh, with uh, Jay Fahey, and I'm gonna uh, speak with uh, them in the park about uh, looking at securing that ground from them. Uh, we've got it surveyed so we know exactly where it would go. And uh, as uh, the mayor said, you know, 
that uh, water tower uh, services, I think about 28.7% of the, the TIP area, so it would be eligible uh, for reimbursement <coughs> or for um, uh, the, the monies from TIP. So, like I said, we're anticipating the um, uh, timeline on this, like next month, probably our first meeting, we'll have an ordinance to for your consideration concerning that uh, TIP agreement. And, um, you know, we should have something relatively soon. I still have to uh, speak with the park about that. But um, so it's all in the works and it should be uh, coming together this fall. So that's, that's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Todd, do you have anything to add? No, I mean, uh, we've still been putting the monthly payments Scala has, uh, continuing like wh how we paid for the membranes. I don't know how much we've kind of built up because it's probably fairly low right now. We've only been doing it for four or five months, maybe. So, huh? I think you're out of I mean, we're going to continue that. By the time uh, payments become due, we'll have a, a large chunk of it, and we won't have any problem paying off the, the remaining loan with Clay City Banking in a pretty small amount of time. And there wasn't any action on this. I mean, that the, no. the, the action will come, you know, once the redevelopment uh, is approved. Uh, this will, there will be no financial report as it's the first one of the month. Uh, as far as miscellaneous, uh, the one thing that I'm going to, I guess, ask for some discussion in miscellaneous, um, the city council currently has, uh, and it deals with fencing, uh, we have a ordinance that basically says that there's a seven foot setback from the property line. So, you know, property A needs to set their fence back seven feet. Property B needs to set their, their fence back seven feet. Um, there is some discussion, um, you know, is, is seven feet a good number? Is that a bad number? Do we need to look to reduce the seven feet? Um, uh, you know, I, I personally think that the seven feet is too much. Uh, you know, I, I feel that, you know, maybe a, a three foot, you know, we need to give the resident the ability to maintain their fence. Uh, if, if they want to paint it, if they want to repair it, uh, you know, there has been some discussions that at particular times we've allowed residents to put their fence on the property line. Uh, and maybe that's all right if, if the two uh, parties agree that it's okay and both parties are going to use it and both parties are going to maintain it but you know then the discussion happens and I'll use a wooden fence privacy fence if somebody decides they want to put graffiti on one side and you've got it set on the property line and the owners aren't getting along um, the, the person that put the fence up doesn't have the right to trespass on the other person's property to repair their fence uh, again, this is this this is just a discussion. Uh, you know, I've talked a little bit with Doug. Uh, you, you know, if you if you research some of the statues, uh, you know, there's a, there's a two inch setback, there's four foot setbacks, there's four inches setback. Um, you know, so so just getting some thoughts. So maybe maybe the city council thinks that seven foot is plenty or is is enough. But I, I just. You know, I'm wondering if, you know, we couldn't be able to reduce that a little bit, you know, and, and again, not telling somebody that you, you can't put a fence up on your private property. I don't think that's falls within what we ought to be doing. Well, I think we ought to reduce it some. I think what the number would be is the discussion about that, but I think we ought to do something. Well, seven foot would be one thing, but we're talking about seven foot. Seven foot, that's 14, 14 feet. feet. I mean, <laughs> that's like a roadway between houses. Yeah. I mean, as long as you can get, you know, your push mower, mow a couple strips down each side and, be, and then get alongside there and maintain and weed eat and uh, paint your fence and whatever, I mean, that should be more than plenty to maintain because it would not just be yours, but if it, your neighbor had one, that'd be double again. Plenty of room to get down through there. I mean, I think. You know, two and a half, three, three and a half feet would be plenty of a setback. Yeah. I would agree with that. I would stick it more a foot, a foot or less. A foot or less. 
Uh, how do you, and, 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 and just a question for me, I mean, you know, when my first thought was maybe you go smaller, but I mean, if you, if you, you need to get back there and push to push more, I mean, push more, you know, 30 inches, you know, a, a, riding, a riding lawnmower deck could be 60 inches, you yeah. know, that's five feet, but I mean, you, you know, I mean, you, I think you need to come up with, uh, with something that says, yeah, we want you to be able to get it as close, but you need to be able to maintain it also. What is the setbacks for shrubs? We have one for shrubs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the homeowner actually has to go to off this side of the property to maintain the shrubs. So they're actually trespassing anyway. Oh. Um. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, food for thought. Uh, let's talk fence. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, you know. Um, so. I mean, I don't know what the correct answer is. Uh, you, you know, uh, you know, and you know, we we uh, you know, I've been asked, you know, by a resident to uh, to address it, you know, because of you know maybe a, a, an issue. Uh, you know, I understand. You know, I mean, if you could get your neighbor to agree, you could put it right on the property line. But and there, I, I'm this, pretty sure there are several fences in town that way. I I, I will say this. Uh, I talked with you know, the previous economic development and zoning officer, uh, you know, and it has maybe been past practice that we have allowed if the, if the property is surveyed to put the fence on the property line, uh, but that goes against ordinance. I would stick with a foot or two, the max. Okay. Any, I, I, I guess what I'm looking for, I, you know, I would like if we're agreeing that it needs to be changed, uh, you know, I would like to have the di discussion to continue here that maybe next council meeting, Attorney Rice could prepare, you know, present us with a, an ordinance to change it. Okay. So we, we've got we've got three feet, we've got a foot. I mean, he said he could go as max as a two. I could I could live with two. two, two, two I mean, you got to be able to at least walk me. Besides. Well, push mower is 22 inches. Yeah, so, so I, th I, I think you should be at least able to put a, take a push mower and go down the side of your fence. Two foot? Two foot. Two foot? Yeah. Terry? Or I don't have any opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry? I can stay all the way. I could live with two feet. Two? Eugene? Yeah. Two? Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, I'll ask Attorney Rice to draw up an ordinance uh, that that reduces the setback on fencing from seven feet uh, to two foot, okay. and we will address that at the next council meeting. Uh, that's all that I had under miscellaneous. Is there anything else that any of the aldermen would like to discuss under miscellaneous? Um, the recreation committee is looking will be coming to council at the next meeting. We're wanting to bring back the Christmas, like the ice skating rink, we're wanting to expand it this year. So it'll be ice skating rink, um, a tent with vendors, kind of making it a whole kind of Christmas kind of thing, bringing thing, a lot of things to downtown. Just We want to showcase downtown businesses and anything that we can do to drive traffic to downtown, I think during the Christmas holidays would be a really good, good thing and it's a good use of the money. and. You know, we sell tickets for the thing, so we get a lot of the money back. We may not get all of it back, but that's, you know, the reason that we collect from the hotel motel tax is to do things that drive traffic to town, uh, create events for our people. And right now we have about $29,000 in our recreation fund, so it's, it's sitting there, $26,000 $26, in the recreation fund. And, you know, we've got a decent amount of money. We've spent quite a bit of money. That's after the glasses and things like that were paid for for the Eclipse. Moving forward, doing things for the town, and, but that'll be on the next agenda. Just some food for thought. Any others under miscellaneous? Uh, we'll, there is no need for executive session again, so <coughs> is there a motion to adjourn? Yes, I'll make a motion. Tyler, second. second. Dewey. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Meeting adjourned. Thank you for everybody for attending. Thank you.